welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. Last year, I made this shirt for Mother's Day. I made it for myself. It says mommy and it has my kids names in the middle. I am going to show you how to create this exact design again, but this time we'll be using infusible ink and a polyester shirt. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's look at materials and then we will head right over into Cricut Design Space. The materials I'm using for this project include my Cricut Maker. However, you can use any full-size Cricut cutting machine. I'm using the Cricut brand of polyester shirt. I'm using a men's large. I'm using the Patterns Animal Brights box of infusible ink. This box comes with four sheets. I'm going to choose two of these sheets to use for my shirt. And I'm using a purple strong grip mat. However, you can also use a green standard grip mat. My heat press is the HTV Ron Auto Heat Press. It is a 15 by 15. However, you could also use a Cricut Easy Press. Now let's head over to the Creative Fabrica website so I can show you how to download the font. And I'm going to also show you how to access the character map UWP. I am on the Creative Fabrica website and before we start to look at the font what i do want to make sure you know is that creative fabrica still has a sale on their yearly all access subscription for 59 dollars for the whole year make a note that the 59 dollars is billed one time and that equates to four dollars and 99 cents per month so you're not having a monthly fee of $4.99. You pay the $59 one time for the entire year. I am currently a yearly all access subscriber. And if I were to view my profile, I can see like just by clicking, hovering over my name. Let's see if it'll show you. It says... This user is a premium member and has the all access subscription. So I paid $59 back in November of 2022, and I will not have to pay again for my subscription until November of 2023. Okay, so now let's look for that font. It is called Hello Honey. Now I will remind you that this font is also available on defont.com, which most of us know is a free website for fonts. However, if you're planning to use this font for commercial use, which means you are making something with this font and you are planning to sell it, you would need to donate to the author because there is a fee to use this font commercially. However, it is included with your yearly all access subscription to Creative Fabrica. So please make a note of that. And I believe the cost of the file or the font is right at $15. If I'm correct, I might be wrong, but I think that was the price I saw. Okay, so what I'm going to show you how to do is just download this font. I already have it downloaded on my computer. So, and it shows you right here, commercial usage allowed. It says you already downloaded, okay? So I'm going to click download. And what will happen if you already don't have, if you don't have it downloaded already, you'll get a folder right there at the bottom left of your screen, the way that I have it, my screen. And it'll be a zipped folder. What you will need to do is extract the files once you get the pop-up. So if I were to click extract all, I'll get an option to just go ahead and extract them or browse and save them where I want them to be saved. Now, if I were to click browse and let's just say I wanted this on my desktop, I could go to this folder right here that just says Delanda stuff and I could double click that folder and I can put it in my Creative Fabrica files folder and I can even give it a new folder. I can call it the Hello Honey font, okay? I can create a folder specifically for this font and I can click select folder. And so now when that 
file, those fonts are downloaded, they will go directly into that folder. I can click extract and it's going to give me the message. If I were to click on any of these files that the file, the font is already downloaded. So like watch what happens. If I click install, it tells me that it's already installed. So I don't want to replace it because I already have it installed. But if you don't, you would click yes, whereas I am going to click no. Okay, so I'm going to click stop and we will now go over to I'm going to show you how to access what is called the character map UWP. Right now I am looking at my desktop and I am using a Lenovo Windows based computer. And what I'm going to do is navigate down here to the task bar and I am going to open the Microsoft Store. What I'm going to do now is just do a search for an app that is called Character Map UWP. Now, I already have this app installed on my computer. It is 100% free. Um, and I'm going to show you how to get it um, installed on your computer. So right now I don't have the option to install it because it's already installed. However, if you want to use it, you would click download where I have the option to open it. Okay. So I'm going to click that. Let me look at this. Okay. I am going to click open and it'll open the character map. When I open the character map, this shows me all of the fonts that I have installed on my computer. These are my system fonts. Okay. So these are all of the fonts that I have downloaded from either Creative Fabrica or Defont.com or any other place where I have purchased a font. These do not include any of the Cricut fonts. What I'm going to do is navigate to that font that is called Hello Honey because that font is the one that we just downloaded from Creative Fabrica and that one has the hearts. The hearts are considered as glyphs and we want to use those for our project. Okay, so you can just see that I have a lot of different fonts. As a matter of fact, it shows you right here at the top left, I have 391 different font families downloaded on my computer. Okay, so I am going to just have that Hello Honey font selected. And now I am going to keep this open, but I am going to go into Cricut Design Space. Now I'm in Cricut Design Space and I am connected to the Cricut Maker. The first thing I'm going to do is grab a text box and I am going to turn on my caps lock and I'm going to type the word mommy. Okay. And I'm going to change the font from the Cricut Sans to one that is called Times New Roman. I can just type in Times. And this is a system font. Okay. And I want to use this, um, I want it to be bold. So not just the regular Times New Roman. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to unlock this. I actually think I want to bring this down to 10.8. I think I, when I looked at it earlier, I did not like it at that size because what I'm also going to do is add some space between my letters. Okay. So I am going to click right here where it says letter space. Let me go ahead and lock this first. And I am going to just increase the amount of space that is in between each one of my letters. Okay, I'm just going to increase it a little bit. And that's why I did not want my uh, the width of my file to be at 11 because I knew I wanted to increase the letter space. Okay, so I'm increasing the space to 0 0.6. Okay, so my the width is still 11, but I wanted to add some space in between the letters. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is grab another text box and I'm going to turn the caps lock off because I don't need it on anymore. And I'm just going to move it over here and I'm going to type the names of my children. So I'm going to type Miles, double click in here, Miles, no space, Madison, Morgan. Okay. 
I'm not leaving a space in between any of their names. Now, this will be a matter of personal preference, but I'm choosing to do mine this way. Now, this is where the Hello Honey font will come into play. So I'm going to go up here to font and I'm going to change this from Times New Roman to Hello Honey. Okay, I'm going to make sure that my system font is the one that's selected and I'm going to just change their names to the system font of Hello Honey. Now I can see that my font is really small and right now that really doesn't matter. Um, what I'm going to do is go back to, let me go ahead and um, just duplicate this for right now. And I am going to just move one of these out of the way. Okay, let me just move one of these out of the way. Okay. Just in case I need it later and I don't have to retype it or worry about it or anything like that. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just for now. And the size right here, it really doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just making it bigger so you can see it and so that I can see it. What I'm going to do is go to the character map, UWP. And the last letter in Miles's name is S. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find an S with the heart on it. Okay, I'm going to look. Okay, I see the S right there. I am going to click copy right here. You can see that uh, the box came up and it let me know that it had been copied. I am going to go back to Cricut Design Space. I am going to click in between the S and the M right there. And I'm going to backspace that S that's there. And I'm going to use the control key on my keyboard and the letter V as in Victor, control V to paste in the new S with the heart. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm looking at the last letter in Madison's name. The last letter in her name is N. So I am going back to the character map UWP. I'm going to look for the N that has the heart on it. I'm going to click copy and I'm going to go back to Cricut Design Space. I'm going to click in, in between the N and the M in Madison's name. I'm going to click backspace and I'm going to do control V as in Victor once again. And I have just attached the heart to her name and Morgan's name. Now I have their names exactly how I want them. I am going to go ahead and attach this. And actually I probably better weld it. Let me weld this. Okay. All right. It is how I want it and I love it. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to put this on top of the word mommy and I can see that it is much too wide. What I'm going to do is just resize it. I'm going to go down to at least 11 point I think I would like 11.4 because I know that if I go above 11.5, I will need to use a long mat and I don't want to have to do that. So I'm going to adjust the width to 11.4. Okay, and 11.4 doesn't look very wide, but it will. Okay, as long as their names are wider than the word mommy, I'm still doing really good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, because I want to use the knockout method, I want to have a, a basically an outline around their name. Now, this used to be much harder before the offset option was um included in Cricut Design Space, and I'm so happy that it is. So what I'm going to do is I am going to select their names and I am going to choose the offset. I want it to be on 0 0.09. I don't want the seven there. I'm going to click apply. And what I'm going to do is select the offset and the word mommy. So I'm holding my shift key and I'm going to select, I'm looking at my layers panel, I'm going to select the offset and I'm going to select the word mommy 
and I am going to slice that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just move that all of those sliced results. I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm going to delete it. So I'm deleting that. I'm deleting those pieces right there. I am deleting this. Anything that looks like scraps, I'm deleting it. And what I'm left with is their names and the word mommy. And it looks very clean. Now, even though the sheet, one of the sheets I'm going to use has a patterned look. I think I'm going to use the one that looks like a tiger print. I think it's tiger. I'm pretty sure it's tiger. I'm going to use uh, the one with the stripes. And I am, I am ready now. I'm not going to um, do anything else to this because I'm using infusible ink. So let me go ahead and find my um, my extra names that I have saved over here. And I'm just going to turn this off. Okay. And let me go back over here to my uh, names and my word mommy. I love the way this looks. It actually looks perfect to me. The one thing I forgot to do was center this, but it looks like it is already centered well enough. And I think this is going to look fantastic. So now I am ready to click make it. I should have two mats and let's see. Okay. Oh, I actually have one mat because I did not change any of the colors and that's perfectly fine. So what I know I need to do is just move this one down a little bit, their names, and I will keep this, uh, the word mommy right here at the top. Now I am using infusible ink, so I will need to mirror this. However, I'm going to put this on my mat face up. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and click mirror. And what I'm going to do now is click continue. And I am going to choose the infusible ink transfer sheet. It says make sure mirror is turned on and material is ink side up. So just in case you forget, you will get a reminder right here. And I'm going to keep it on the default pressure. I'm using my fine point blade. I am going to get this loaded on my mat. And everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. I have my box of infusible ink and I have my true control knife. I am going to open this box and I am going to take out the two sheets that I'm planning to use. Now I am only going to use one mat for this. If you have never used infusible ink, you will notice that, let me go ahead and put a cap on my knife you will notice that when you open the box it does come inside of a bag like this and that is just to keep the ink dry and not get any moisture in there i'm going to use my knife again i am going to get this opened up and i'm going to only remove the sheets that i'm planning to use now, what you will also notice about infusible ink is that the colors look very, very dull when you take it out of the box. It does come with butcher paper, and thank goodness it does because I did not bring any with me um, at this house where we are staying. Okay, so I'm going to use this sheet right here, and I'm just hopeful that this is going to look nice together because I haven't ever used any of these colors and I am going to get this placed back inside the bag and inside the box. I have the infusible ink on the mat. I have it face up. It is secure to the mat. Remember, you do not have to use a purple strong grip mat. You can always use a green standard grip mat and I am going to get this inserted. My design is mirrored in Cricut Design Space, and I am going to get this cut out. I'll speed this part up. Mm -hmm. 
Now, before removing the mat from the machine, I am going to make sure this cut all the way through because it is a nightmare to weed infusible ink when it has not cut all the way through. So I'm just going to double check this. Okay, I'm going to get the mat removed from the machine. Now, most people who don't like infusible ink, they don't like it because of the way it's weeded. And some people just hate it, some people just love it. Let me know what you think about infusible ink. You just need to know that infusible ink is sublimation ink, essentially. And you need to weed it with your fingers. Okay, so. I have grown to have a love relationship with infusible ink. I don't hate it. I actually, I actually like it a lot, especially if for those of you who have not gotten into sublimation yet, it is definitely the way to go. So I'm going to carefully remove this, especially since I did a double cut because I can see where some of it is trying to stick to this strong grip mat. So I'm going to be very, very careful about this. Now with this part right here, because I'm using infusible ink, I'm going to have to remove this from this sheet and put it in between the word mommy. So this is going to be a little bit of a tougher task, but I'm up for the challenge. I'm definitely going to speed this part up, but I'm, my goal is to get these very thin letters <laughs> weeded out and I'm going to do my best. I want to speed this part up though. I have it all weeded out and you can see it was quite a task. I thought I lost the I in Madison's name, but I did find it on the table. Um, and this font is very thin, so it was a task. Now I'm just making sure that it's going to line up correctly when I get ready to place it on the fabric. So I'm just testing it out right here on the table. And I am actually going to use those two hearts that were in the middle of Miles and Madison's name and Madison and Morgan's name. And I'm going to find a way to put them on the shirt also. Let's move to the heat press. Now we are at the heat press and I am letting the heat press heat up to 385 degrees Fahrenheit. And my time is set to 40 seconds. What I'm going to do is get a crease down the middle of the shirt and I am going to do a quick pre-press. Now it is a good idea to have a lint roller. However, I did not have one, but make sure you do when you do your project. What I'm doing right here is making sure that all of my letters are stuck to the sticky backing of the infusible ink sheet and that all of the ink is face up in the same direction. I'm sticking those letters down. Now I do realize that it seems like I'm making this look easy, but remember this video has been sped up. I lined this up as good as I could get it, but that I in Madison's name almost turned this into hammer time. I lined it up three finger lengths from the top. All of the ink is facing the same direction, which is on the shirt. 
there is a sheet of butcher paper inside the shirt as well as a sheet of butcher paper on the outside of the shirt. My heat press is set for 40 seconds and of course I cross my fingers because I did want my shirt to look nice. Now that the timer is about to beep, let's see what it looks like. change the camera view so you can get a good look at it look at this oh my goodness look at that look I love it <laughs> and with the infusible ink the ink is in the fabric so you can see it's not on top of the shirt the ink is in there just like it would be if this was sublimation because remember it infusible ink is essentially sublimation ink now if you found this tutorial helpful please consider liking the video subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching Bye!